Tech Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, episode 563, 14th of December, eh? 2017, welcome. Uh, we are joined here by the two usual suspects, uh, Warlock and Jordan. How are you going, guys? Good, good, good. Good, 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 good stuff. Uh, what have you been up to, Jordan? Working hard? Pretty much. Christmas time of the year. Yep. Trying to juggle a few different things. Good. But yeah. Well, well, that's exactly what I want to hear. Keeping you off the streets. <laughs> and what about exactly. you? Uh, what about you, Jace? Programming well, pebbles been, um, or Fitbits? Selling some more of these. I've sold over 200 copies of my uh, little app now. Well, three that's of awesome. them combined. Nice. And uh, I got pop. some Fitbit flyers. What are they? Headset. Headset. Headset that you can Bluetooth connect to your watch and also your phone. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, if you want, you can leave your phone at home and just go jogging with these and you can stream music through them and it can also coach you on your run. Oh, yeah. I've got this little fella. Oh, the Fitbit Flex. What's that do? It uh, does the same Flex. thing as most of the Fitbit. just measures your movements and stuff like that, but um, sleep quality and that sort of thing. Oh, nice. I've got that one free, so I've already got the Ionic, which is much better, but you're not going to throw away a freebie. <laughs> and where, where do you get your app? Where do you get your watch face from? Uh, yeah, if you have the uh, Ionic and the Fitbit um, app on Android or iPhone or Windows phone, you can just do a search in the app gallery and you can download and install it. All right, good stuff. Now, and I also got some merchandise done for my radio show. That's nice. nice. So yeah, how did you get that done? Tell us the what's the tech – well, not the technology, but uh, – so it's a multicolored shirt. So multicolors yep. are more expensive to print and probably a one-off. So how did yep. you go about that? Online, down the road to the t Yeah, printer? I uh, I designed all the graphics in uh, Paint.net, which is my favorite uh, free graphics program. Give them a few bucks because those guys are great. I already did, and uh, just designed the image at uh, four thousand by four thousand pixels. So it was quite high resolution, and then uploaded it to Zazzle.com.au. And then uh, pick the things you want to print it on. I've got a couple of mugs, coffee mugs, really big, big, big coffee mugs because I, like I need a, a lot of mm. morning. <laughs> yes, I like a big coffee mug. So I've got mug. two of those, one to leave at home and one to leave at the radio station. So I've got a cup there. Uh, a couple of bumper stickers, one for my car, one for Dad's. I've got uh, this black shirt, a white T-shirt. I've got a white polo shirt and um, a trucker's cap still on the way in the mail. Nice. It's going to happen. Uh, my logos on it so now, um does this come is this an australian this zizzle or yeah, shizzle zazzle, or, zazzle, how do you, zazzle.com.au how do you, do you know how to spell it <laughs> z-a-z-z-l-e yeah. okay right. com. so is it is it the you know is the shirt screen printed or is it like more of a transfer or just don't know i think it's a screen printing by the look of it it's really good quality and looks really nice they said nice. the black ones take a bit longer to print because they print it in just pure white first and then let that dry and then print the colors on top of it so it brings out yes. the covers, covers really vivid they come sound, life really. Well, it does sound like screen printing geez they must have some yeah. uh pr must have it down refined process because i know screen printing yeah, like that's a couple of passes. Like it's normally like about a dollar or something, you know, each each colour yeah. or each pass. Um, yeah, how much was the shirt? Um, I would have to look up my... <laughs> yeah, no, me out. no, that's all right. Well, we can have a look. Well, I'm going to go to this Zazzle and have a look uh, and see what what else is there. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, you can get us uh, on the... The uh, polo, polo shirt was 39.35. This dark black shirt was 45.65. And um, another shirt, uh, thirty six twenty. But I had a when I went to buy it, I had um, I designed it on a Saturday morning a couple of weeks ago, and uh, by Saturday afternoon I had it all uploaded and I picked which ones I wanted. And then found out they had a discount code that was valid only until midnight that same <laughs> night. Right. So so I used tap, the discount tap, tap. code and got a lot of money off. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Nice work. Now just before the show, uh, we were talking about. I was talking about products, actually, and I was saying to these guys that I had a pair of these, uh, what did I call them? The uh, prism glasses. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever seen prism glasses, but uh, here they are. And uh, so what they are is I've had them for about 10 years, and they're so good, I thought I'd share the, you know, share the love. Uh, so you can lay down flat on your back, put these glasses on and watch the TV. So they're, yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not glasses you wear when you go to jail, not prism. No, Prism. Prism, that's right. And you can get them, P-R-I-S-M. You get them on uh, at, well, Amazon, well, 
give you an idea anyway, find them Amazon. somewhere else. Amazon.com.au? No, this, this site I've just pulled up here is just a .com, but I'm sure you get them on eBay or somewhere. But, yeah, about 10 bucks US, so maybe about 15 bucks. The item, oh, it does ship to Australia, so, yeah, $10 US. But, yeah, prism glasses. There we go. There's another look at them. They, yeah, lay flat on your back and watch the telly. Good for when you're really <laughs> tired. <laughs> All right. Well, tough. you want to watch your feet. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Make sure you don't have a, a big T before you do it because all you'll see is your gut. So it's, got to, it's got to be empty stomach. <laughs> that's me most of the time, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Catch us on Facebook uh, if you want to leave us a comment or uh, whatever. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. And on the YouTube, get the video of the podcast on youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. And just before uh, the show, I posted up a, an Apple II Forever ad that uh, someone had put up there. So go and have a look at that if you're an Apple II fanboy. I remember the Apple IIs, so they they were good. Uh, Don't forget the ATH web hosting as well. Uh, All the the bandwidth and whatever is brought to you is all paid for and packaged up and whatever by athwebhosting.com.au. So, uh, yeah, test them out. That's uh, because they're bringing this podcast to you for free. We are, and uh, that's us. So test us out if you're looking for some hosting. Uh, don't forget also the paper. There's aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper published twice a day. Uh, just random stories, you know, not just tech, but also just news and sport and all that sort of stuff. And the web page is aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. And don't forget the Aussie Mac Zone. All right, let's get into it because we had a really long intro last week, didn't we? But <laughs> let's try and get into an email this week. Emails received. Jason got an email. <gasps> now, now I'll read it email from Oz. Oh, my friend. Hello, Oz. Now, with all of the current hype around Bitcoin, I've been thinking about grabbing a few dollars worth of Ethereum and some Litecoin, just in case the craze flows on down through the chain. Well, you are right, Horse, because it is. My question is how to buy them. Where did you buy yours through? There are so many websites out there, but I'm not sure which ones are legit and which ones are reliable ones to go through. The... Uh, uh, the be heard a lot of stories or oh, he's heard a lot of stories who have bitcoin out there somewhere but can't access them because they can't remember their passwords will and their, <laughs> and their wallet for and leo, reason. leo oh, is the same oh how many did leo have he's got about 80 or something as well i think 80 yeah oh dear oh dear uh he doesn't want to be one of those people if it does skyrocket it's skyrocketing or oh, bitcoin is uh, geez, and I love the podcast. Good stuff. Easy going. Weekly wrap up. Keep it up. All the best to all of you for, and for the festive season. Good on yours. Now we're going to try and get an answer for you. Uh, where did you? Right. <laughs> so, what the way that um, the Bitcoin works and some of these other ones is, you if you mining it yourself, you have a wallet which is just a file on your desktop computer, and if you don't keep it backed up somewhere and remember what the password to it is because it's an encrypted file then uh, you can either accidentally delete it and all your Bitcoin's gone, or if you forget your file, you can't access the uh, coins in there if you forget your password. So what I use, uh, so I don't have my own wallet on my computer, I use a market which is uh, called BTC Markets. I did a bit of research and uh, BTC Markets seems like a pretty good one and um, transfer some money there. Some of them take bank deposits and there are different methods of uh, transferring your money to them. And then once you're there, you just select uh, which type of um, cryptocurrency that you're interested in and then type in how much you want to uh, purchase of it and it'll do the transactions for you. And then it'll keep it on a wallet on their system, which you have access to and other people don't get access to. So um, you can can, uh, keep it there and then you don't have to worry about losing your wallet. I mean, you can download the wallet code onto your computer and also mine and also get other... Uh, coins from other places and synchronize it through your same wallet if you want to but uh, for me it's just easier to leave it all on btcmarkets.net website so um, ethereum when i purchased i purchased only one ethereum just to see what it was like for fifty dollars uh it says um no sorry that was uh, half of an ethereum it was 250 dollars for one and now it's a thousand and seventy five and the Litecoin, I bought one Litecoin for $50. That was only about three month, three or four months ago, and now it's $429. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? So would you, would you invest in shares or real estate or throw it into a cryptocurrency and watch your money quadruple in like four months? 
Yes, and well, you got to hope it's you got to hope it stays up there, don't you? Though. Oh, that's the same if the shares. You got to hope they stay right. up there. And aren't they saying that the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin is just booming like crazy at the moment? It won't last. Yeah, they've been saying that for a few months now. That's the problem, though. When oh. it got to like um, five thousand, they're like, "Oh wow, it's really high now. It's crazy." I got to nine. Oh, that's amazing. It's at nine thousand dollars <laughs> now. It's at twenty three and a half thousand. So. Yeah. What what the ceiling is, nobody knows. But um, you just hedge your bets if you're not if you're not keen on Bitcoin. If you're not, mm. Yeah, if you don't want to mortgage your house like a lot of people are doing and investing that in the bitcoins, because it was fine if you wanted to invest in Bitcoin when it was hundred bucks. Now it's twenty three and a half thousand. You buy one Bitcoin <laughs> and then hope it might I don't know double. It's not going to go up a thousand fold like it has since the last couple of years. So I don't expect to see it at 23 million dollars next year or something like that so you're more likely to invest in something like litecoin or ethereum there's a lot of other ones is ripple b cash um and so many different types so do yeah. a bit of research i've got a, a, a wallet not the online one i've got a wallet just on the computer so yep. and i haven't opened it for ages i think i stuck 50 bucks in it don't yep. lose it yep. And don't lose know. it and don't lose the password. I haven't opened up the wallet in so long, I wouldn't even know it was in there. <laughs> I wouldn't remember you know my the password. password there? Right, no, well, you're right. Having it in the cloud is so much better, mm. I reckon. Oh, yeah, for sure. For you're sure. Having it on your computer for you to look after yourself is just, yeah. If you have it on your computer, put it in a Dropbox folder or, Sky yeah. or OneDrive or whatever. Back it up to a cloud anyway, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was only I was sitting down today because like one of the stories I had for this week was the Bitcoin bubble. Uh, people, you know, they're all fearing the the bubble will burst and all this sort of stuff as it passes. As Jay said, whatever uh, was seventeen thousand US, whatever that was Australian, what twenty one or something? Didn't you say? Um, proponents say Bitcoin three and a half. Yeah, that's crazy. Like. Who's going to pop in now and buy one? It's a bit crazy. Uh, proponents say Bitcoin is a good medium of exchange and a way to store value, much like precious metal. They also argue it's preferable to traditional currencies because it is not subject to central bank manipulation. It's subject to a lot of other <laughs> freaky factors. Manipulation. Yeah. Yes, you don't know who's washing their money through it either. Yeah, the supply of Bitcoin will eventually be capped at $21 million. And so far, about 16.7 million have already been released. I think once it caps out... And a lot of those are lost, too. Yeah, well, yeah, Not true. A huge amount, but probably, probably, you know, a tenth of it or something like that is lost. And, I mean, if you're going to do money, money laundering, use Bitcoin because the Commonwealth Bank, you can't use that anymore. They got found out, so you have to use... <laughs> Else. <laughs> uh, critics say the price run-up is a bubble that has been driven mostly by speculation, leaving Bitcoin vulnerable to a sharp reversal. Uh, Ch JP Morgan Chase and Co. Chief Executive Jamie Dimon famously called Bitcoin a fraud in September. Now, I sit down, as I was sitting here reading this today, I thought, why would Bitcoin go down? What's going to make it go down? And I reckon what probably makes anything go down is people are going to go, well, 23,500 is good enough for me, I'm going to sell. And then once one person, you know, starts selling and it sort of becomes a trend, everyone wants Everybody. to start selling and then no one wants to buy. <laughs> and so the value just goes down. And that's probably what's going to happen sooner or later. I can't see it going up much more. Like it gets a bit well, ridiculous. The, val the value of every Everything is based on speculation. The value of oil in the oil markets is based on speculation. If somebody comes up with the theory of speculating something at a higher value, then other people will sell it at a higher value. If, if, if they speculate low, it goes down. Everything is volatile. That You can invest in shares and things like that. So this is just another thing to invest in. And it's speculation, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is everything else. But I guess at least shares, there is something behind it. It's like you know the the physical company or whatever, uh, but with the, which can go belly up. True, true. Uh, I'd rather invest in shares, I think, than Bitcoin. I'm just not. Well, while it's up at twenty three thousand, you old fashioned, you. <laughs> while it's up at twenty three thousand, I'm leaving it alone. It's only ever going to work if people invest, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's well, not going to work if we don't pay attention. No, well, that's right. That's right. I think once it gets so, once it gets capped at twenty one million, that'll probably do it. A, a, a good 
service because then we know that that's where it's at. And then, you know, once it starts trading... People are moving to Ethereum or Litecoin or whatever. Yeah, you just can't work. You know, when you get to the websites and it says pay with Bitcoin, does that mean that you can pay with the others as well or it is just solely Bitcoin? Usually they usually they have... Yeah, they usually have options, don't they? Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Depends on what they support, what they feel like supporting. Mm, okay. Cool. I've paid, paid with Bitcoin with uh, Bitcoin with my my Bitcoin wallet before. Yeah, right. I've had in places I might not want to use a, a credit card or something. Oh, well, we'll leave that anonymous. leave that uh, conversation there. Then we'll just we'll leave that to our imagination. Well, with well, not for necessarily bad websites, but if you're, you know, if you're dealing with a website in another country, you might not feel comfortable with or right, whatever. You, okay, you know, not China that. though, because they ban Bitcoin. Oh, really? Yeah, that's because they can't control it. I guess. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right. So Bitcoin, and uh, what was that one? That market again? The BTC markets. There you go. Now, mm. did we get? Did we, where's that email? Did we get all of that? Did we answer everything? Probably. See, that was I've pretty comprehensive. I've looked at that BTC market a couple of times and never really ventured any more into it. But I love the idea of that being in the cloud. Mm. Mm. So you can set your whole Bitcoin, your whole cryptocurrency existence up through this BTC markets, or many others. Yeah. There's just one mm. example that I I did a bit of research on and um, seemed to be a lot of people were giving a good reviews. So. Hmm. Okay, there you go. And it's got a uh, HTTPS, so it must be right. All right, yep. good, st- good stuff. Uh, what uh, you can't trust always these days. I mean, with with the um, the uh, Let's Encrypt, you can encrypt any website now. So if you go to my website, jasonoakley.com is encrypted with HTTPS. Mm. Don't just say, because it's got my name on it and it's encrypted, it must be good. could be anything on any of the websites these days. Well, that's yeah, right. Let's Encrypt. You can encrypt, yeah. You can encrypt anything. Yeah, but I think it just gives the the u the end user the the confidence that you know whatever they're typing into their computer is encrypted on its way to your site. And so yeah, but they it. could have, they could register PayPal dodgy dot com and encrypt it. People go, yeah. oh, it's got PayPal in it. Click. Yeah. Oh, where's all my money gone? I, mean, I think I think Let's Encrypt says on their their website that the only reason they do it is to get as many people encrypted as possible so it doesn't yeah they want the whole mean, internet encrypted which is good because uh google doesn't necessarily mean they're reputable yeah yeah that, that's right though that's what they want i don't know i don't know uh it's free it is free so it's good why not exactly why not uh yeah, why not jace what's uh what have you found this week that you'd well like something you might be interested in if you ever get it <laughs> yes the price of broadband is set to <laughs> fall next year <laughs> Yeah. After NBN Co revealed plans to cut the cost of its higher speed services yesterday <sighs> to win more customers and improve its damaged reputation. It's got nothing to but do with me. Warned, race to the bottom now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but experts warn there are no guarantees that discounts would be passed on to consumers or that new packages would improve the network's reliability, as it claimed. NBN Co Chief Executive Bill Morrow said the company was negotiating with internet providers to drop the wholesale price of some of its plans and include additional capacity to prevent slowdowns during peak times. Mr. Morrow said the discounts were designed to encourage more users to adopt higher speed plans as more than 80% of NBN users adopted services offering 25 megabits per second or less, which is often no better than the technology they used previously. Without affordable higher speed plans, many end users aren't seeing the true potential of the NBN access network. Customer satisfaction levels fall if expectations of the NBN experience aren't met. We also recognise that we need to do something dramatic and quickly to encourage retailers to get end users onto high speed plans as growth during peak hours continues to develop on the network. The 12 month discounts available after March next year will see the wholesale price of a 50 megabit plan cut by 27% to $45 and the price of a 100 megabits per second plan cut by 10% to $65. Mr. Mario said NBN Co would also drop the price for additional bandwidth. Yeah, so yeah, we are on a permanent pause up here on the Gold Coast. I uh, looked at the NBN FC. site. Ooh. Yeah, we're we're on a uh, six to eight months pause uh, for the highly road. faulty cable. I don't know what's going on, but uh, but how much do you pay, Jace? As a matter of interest, for your ninety nine, uh, ninety nine. Oh, that's okay. And what, hey, Jordan? You're on it, are you? I can't remember. Yeah, I'm the same. You with Telstra, Jace? No, it's Guy Mesh. 
Mm. Got 99 as well with Telstra. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. frustrates me is the is is the um the mobile plans. I don't know why we haven't got better mobile plans. Our, our mobile internet is almost as fast as MBN, if not even Faster. more so. Now yes. plans are terrible. Yeah, well, I guess you know, it's all limited to the infrastructure and whatever's out there, isn't it? Like it's limited to profit and shareholder requirements. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, you get a couple of gig of you get a couple of gig of data on your phone, you know, and you pay big bucks for it. Yeah, well, I think well, I've, I switched from Telstra to the Audi Mobile. I'm probably not entirely happy. I'm going to give that Boost a shot, that Boost Mobile or whatever it is. But yep. yeah, I don't Telstra think Telstra anyway. Yeah, that's right. That's Telstra. It was more Telstra retail, I think, where Audi was the Telstra wholesale service. But um, yeah, well, you know. boosting the Telstra heard company, of, um, whereas Audi is a different company. Of Amazim, yeah, Amazim, yeah, Amazim, yeah. Do they? I think they're they Optus resell. Optus, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I was looking around this week for, you know, kids, good good plans for kids, and Amazim have got that ten dollar unlimited deal. Yeah, it's not too bad. Probably good for I'll 10 just gig all right and and calls now. and texts. I do um, $90 a month for 20 gigs of um, data through Telstra. It's not too bad. On your phone? Yeah. Why have I only got three gig? I'm ripped off. Go talk yeah. to them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, Are you I'm on a Telstra on my phone, the same plan. Are you on a plan? Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, you can get like, are you Do you, are you in contract? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, they probably won't ring and offer me anything until after the contract's over. No, I well, know you can get a contract forty five dollars a month BYO BYO phone. And I think it was about uh, might have been about eight gig or something yeah. um, with Telstra straight right direct through Telstra. But the Audi ones, I'm paying thirty five dollars for eight gig, and look, that's do that does me. I think. I, look, I, imagine if they made it five hundred gig. No one would have MBN, would they? They'd give up. No they just shared yeah. it. Well, that's what, that's what the hoping would happen, would yeah. happen, but it never eventuated. Mm. Uh, look, and the internet would be so much faster. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. Uh, look, uh, this one I've got here is pr- pretty worrying, something you don't think of. We've spoke about before, you know, how people can uh, hack into unprotected video cameras and all this sort of stuff, you know, security cams and everything like this, uh, where the password is just admin, admin or admin password or something. But something you don't think about is keyless entry door locks. Now, apparently these are also vulnerable to unauthenticated requests. Now, vulnerability has been found in two keyless entry door locks, enables local attackers to lock and unlock doors, as well as create their own RFID badges by sending unauthenticated requests to the affected devices. Now, I wonder how many people have uh, these door locks. I don't. Not many. What, their door locks are connected to the internet for the hackers to get in? Yeah. Or are they doing it locally over over Wi-Fi? Well, over the exploit was discovered by SecureWorks researchers uh, Mike Kelly and John Makata, and is caused by incorrect access control vulnerabilities in the AMAG Technologies Symmetry Edge Network door controllers. So it's in the network. So I'm research that three times fast. <laughs> the oh, not the whole lot. It'll take me an hour. Researchers uh, reverse engineered the basic structure of the network communication and found an attacker with network access to bypass physical controls and gain access network to a sec- access. yeah secured mm. physical area, thus changing the scope of the affected resources. So look, that's probably pretty worrying. Like people, people have these things on their say units. You know, but uh, they've got to have network access to your local network. They've got to get through that password first, don't they? Yeah, basically. Oh, I saw I saw an interesting article where this guy had said that um, he'd he'd left his house and was walking out to his car, and his next door neighbour came over to him and he said, "Oh, hey, um, I've just got something to drop off to you." And he's like, "Oh, I've just I just closed up the house." He said, "No, no, it's all right. I'll open it." And he's like, "What?" And the neighbour goes over to his front door. The the owner of the house kept his iPad in the lounge room and he controlled the lights from there. He controlled the stereo and his front door, which was keyless one. And so the guy yells through the window, okay, Siri, open <laughs> the front Siri. door. <laughs> and Siri picked it up on his, la- in his iPad uh, in the lounge room and goes, okay, opening front door, <laughs> click. And he, opened, he went, what? That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's fine. That's What's, awesome. That's, that's a, something you wouldn't think of, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't, didn't uh, uh, in the US, Amazon... Ha- uh, have 
key access to your place. You can. Yeah, I was reading a terrible an article about terrible experience with. Yes, that I must have read the same one. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. So they can drop your packages off inside your door. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. also have a camera there, so it'll monitor and send you a photo of whoever's coming through the door when it's activated. But this guy had a terrible experience because first his his door wouldn't latch properly with the Amazon um, door latch. And then, uh, so he had to pay a hundred dollars for a guy to come out and put in a new one. And then it screeched really loud, screaming metal against metal every time he opened and shut it. And then he tried two different other ones that Amazon rec recommended, and they didn't work any better. And they were just getting uh, sick and tired of it in the end. Yeah. So, but that's I don't know. What's what's the solution there? Like, would you give Amazon a key? I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're right, Jordan. That was uh, an attack with network access for those uh, door yeah, so locks. Yeah, I've got to get through the network password first. I've yeah. often thought about having it myself, but it's an expensive way to lock your door, isn't it? Oh, these, yes, these door locks yeah. are pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. So the attacker could also inject fake card values, which can then be used to physically bypass the door, since the primary function of the door control is able to access uh, is help control access. So yeah, apparently the AMAG people who make the these particular locks. No, would notify its clients prior to the public disclosure of the vulnerability. So if you got one, let's hope that you've been disclosed to. Imagine if you were connected to the internet, though. It'd be pretty good that you'd get hacked all over the world and someone can undo your front door mm. remotely. Yes, yes. Well, I guess it's only, really, you know, it won't be too long before these things are connected, you know, with all this... I suppose if someone, if someone can hack your network remotely anyway from the internet then they could get in and do it couldn't they if they were smart enough yeah well you know with this apple home kit and everything you know turn your lights and powers and air conditioners off and on well i guess why not your front door you know like yeah. that you could find you uh, benefits for that you know like you know you get the phone call from your your son or your daughter or something hi, hi dad i've been locked out of the house and you're at work and you go well, hang on a second beep and, and there you, you get go to work one day and you, you run late for work and the boss says why are you late says, oh I've got a virus in the front door. <laughs> couldn't lock it. I couldn't get out. The house wouldn't let me out. I couldn't get out of the house. My, my front door had a virus. Yeah. Aren't, aren't they in some scary movies like that? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. It's what... the digital age, isn't it? It's, getting, it's just going to, they're, they're digitalizing everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's I don't, awesome. oh, yeah. I don't know what the answer is, but somehow we've got to start securing all this stuff up. I don't know how, but, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, uh, the, uh, yeah, well, I think private question. networks is a good a good place to start. Mm. You've got to try and you've got to separate all these things from from everything else. You know, mm. if you're going to have, maybe if you're going to have your front door and, and all these things on Wi-Fi, maybe create a separate network and put those things in that network. So it's not your network that you share with, or maybe yeah, and everyone else that might have your Wi-Fi password for starters. Or maybe it's. Or, yeah, or yeah. maybe it's it's all controlled by in a central, say, cloud location. So if you go open door, then it can go back to the cloud and say, oh, you, this guy just requested open door, and then it can send you an SMS, like a two-factor authentication type mm. process, maybe. Uh, yeah, or NFC or something, do, do, so it's not Wi-Fi. Get a ring doorbell. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they, they're do it with something other than the door and then with, just press open. Do it with Bluetooth or something, you know. So, I mean, they do them with Bluetooth now, but at least that's kind of – more it's a paired sort of thing and it's not shared with everyone else so mm. yeah you've well, only got to be near, near your front door with your phone and it'll unlock mm. i like going around the neighborhood with the remote control on the you know garage door see what see what else opens <laughs> now what, what uh what have you got anything for us jordan or are you just uh happy um, I, to I, I kind of well i had a I, I did have a quick scan as i said i was kind of rushing to the table there was one that amused me um and I'll, I'll just kind of breeze over it. Um, where was it? Uh, Apple drops white color scheme oh. with new iMac Pro. Where's that music coming from? Not me. Not here. You might have a web page open. They got yeah. autoplay on them. Oh, I've got about four of them going. <laughs> on on. The, up on the tab, you'll see a little speaker next to the cross mark. Should show which one's got the which, noise. Yeah, little speaker will come up. <laughs> if you use Chrome, especially, it'll have that. I think it's off now. There we go. I had about two. Oh, another one's starting. As soon as I <laughs> load a page, it plays the video automatically. Um, Apple drops white color scheme with new iMac Pro. Apple's, Apple's latest high powered iMac Pro goes on sale tomorrow, and fans can expect a very different look from the company's traditional design. 
Um, I got reading through this and I was kind of a little bit laughing at by him. Um, Apple fans prepare to get jealous. The tech Titan on Friday will, will roll out a black lightning cable. <laughs> oh, no. For the first time, the company has produced a desktop computer or ca- and all the cables weren't white or something. What does it say? The company has produced a desktop computer or cable that wasn't white. Wow. Um, but getting your hands on the black lightning cable will cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> oh, God. It's because the only way to get one is by buying a new Mac Pro, which goes on sale tomorrow and carries a hefty price tag. While, oh, why would you just uh, spray paint price it? price bill to be confirmed, the new desktop starts at US $5,000 oh, or about $6,500. Just to, and I thought that was a bit of a laugh, just to get a black lightning cable. Yeah, that's a, jo- that's a joke. <laughs> That is funny. They're changing their colour scheme. They're getting a black lightning cable. <laughs> well, I read another story. I don't know why they, these stories are coming out, but I read another story that uh, probably next year they're doing away with their Macs altogether. That's it. No more Macs. They're uh, going to like the they're iPad. rename them. Well, the iPad Pro. That's going to be the Mac. Maybe with the keyboard. Sounds weird, but this story went on. Oh, and- so they think they don't need desktop desktops anymore. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So well, right. what are the truck? What this bloke was saying in his article was that, uh, yeah, that, that the the iPad is going to replace the Mac and, that, that, and Apple has shown this sort of well, so-called leadership before, you know, getting rid of the floppy drive, getting rid of the uh, CD drive, getting rid of... Now the, get rid of the computer altogether. That's right, get rid of the whole bit, the whole bit. But just following on while we're... It, it, take, it takes courage to have a face scanner or something they said, didn't they? Yeah. 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 It was a thing. But just like, moving on with the uh, Apple sort of theme they're apparently in talks also with shazam so you know the the shazam where you hold your phone up to the music and it tells you what yep. song it's playing yep. Gonna buy it. yeah so it looks like uh the users of apple iphone with the shazam uh, you say hey siri what's that song and the apple identify it shazam has other features which i didn't know about as such as the ability to identify tv shows has any yep. have you guys used it for that no no, <laughs> no i didn't know my it. question how is, does it um, identify a tv show it must know the script there used to be a really Must. great app uh, website for developers called Test Flight. And when you're creating an app for iPhone or Android, you could upload a test version there to certain subscribers and they could download a copy of it onto your iPhone, iPad or Android device and test it out. And Apple's like, that's a brilliant idea. So they bought Test Flight, shut down Android. Now Android couldn't use it. People have to try something else to do it. So Shazam is on Android and Apple. So Apple buys Shazam, shut down Android. There goes half the mm. customers at least. And what do we use? We have to wait for somebody else to do the same thing now. There is another one. It's not Shazam. Sound Soundhound. That's, that, that's, is it good? Yeah, that's what I use. I use Soundhound uh, for songs, you know, in the car or something. You just might have to switch then. Yeah, drop your phone down by your feet to the speaker if you want to hear the sound of the what song it is. But Tech News website TechCrunch reported uh, the talks earlier writing that Apple could pay about $400 million US million for Shazam and that could be signed as early as next week. But then further on, the article went on to say that Shazam was recently valued at a billion. So I don't know what's going on there. It's funny because I used to use Shazam and then I just have stopped. I've never used it again since. I thought it was a bit of a novelty. It's amazing that it's still going so strong and so and it's worth so much. Well, I think what uh, Apple wants Shazam for is so to make make it easier for people to find songs on the Apple Music. So they're try, probably yeah. trying to pull yeah, people across. There's a yeah. link in there to buy now on iTunes and go straight to the iTunes yeah. store every song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to give you an idea how big the Apple Music is, because I don't know, you might remember I don't particularly rate Apple Music. I, I don't like the interface at all. I just just really just really don't like it. Uh, as of mid two thousand and seventeen, Apple Music had twenty seven million subscribers. Uh, and that's behind Spotify, who's got sixty million. Uh, I, I love Spotify. Yeah, oh, Spotify's to go. I can. It needs a bit of tweaking with a few things. I'd like to see songs uh, display with the year that it was sung or published i'd like that little tweaks i might have to look at look at signing up with deezer i've heard about what's deezer i've heard that somewhere deezer is another music site like uh, pandora and spotify and those but um pandora is as um supported on the fitbit ionic oh yes and pandora shut down in australia last year so that's right (laughs) 
Deezer is another platform that has music apparently that's a bit like those. So I might have to give it a go and see what it's like because right. you can you can connect your watch directly to the Deezer service and stream through your watch to the um, flyer headphones. Mm. Nice. What's the- there was a um, another article I was reading in that's kind of along the same lines there that YouTube is working on a new streaming service and it's launching in the next few months. Yes. Music, yeah, I read that. Stream. Yeah, well, everyone's getting into it, aren't they? What's the difference, though, does anyone know, between, say, Pandora and then just doing something like Spotify Radio? Isn't that the, is that the, the same sort of deal, isn't it? Probably but, similar idea, yeah. I have probably. used Spotify Radio. Hmm. I, I use, use my own curated lists. Wouldn't YouTube Music... I think that'd give everyone a run for the money, and that the, the um wouldn't the artists love it as well because it, they'd be more protective of yeah the musical content that's on, that's currently on YouTube now. Well, I like the YouTube. I like YouTube watching, say, the YouTube streaming it through the Chromecast, especially with the music, because I don't know if this is how it's supposed to be, but it seems to me that the when you say stream. You know, so you start something off on YouTube and you stream it through Chromecast and then it go to the next one and then the next one and the next one and the next one. Well, it's sort, it's sort of, it knows it's streaming and it won't throw up a really bad quality clip. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I've noticed that it, it, oh, okay. it, yeah, it just keeps the quality with good quality clips. It might, unless it might be somehow inbuilt that, okay, anything that I show has got to be 720 or higher or something like that. But, yeah, yeah, I reckon, you know, for music, you know, you're having a party or something, you throw the YouTube on a playlist. Oh, and yeah. It's That's great. Why I reckon YouTube's, I reckon YouTube, if they've got a music service going, they've got half a chance, I reckon. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think that's, I think it's good. Because uh, they're a big, obviously a big company. They've got their backing behind them if they can make it work. But mm. to get in front of Spotify is going to be pretty good. Yeah, look, too. Spotify's got the, that, got the goods at the moment. I, I can't see anyone beating that for the, for the, in the meantime. I love it. Uh, but going back to your black iMac leads, and maybe this is why they've gone black, because the king has returned. Johnny Ive... <laughs> has returned to the helm of Apple design team. Maybe, you know, he could see the writing on the wall and Tim says, come back, Johnny, come back. And he goes, right, my first decree John, is a black iPad lead or a black iMac lead. Get da, rid da, of the white blow everyone's mind. That's right. And you know what, They've Tim? Been white for so long. Apple's not racist anymore. No, that's right. <laughs> and it's, it's it's gender neutral and it costs yep. $400, Tim, $400. <laughs> Let's go. Now, I'll he- tell you what, my um, lightning cable is already black. I got one from uh, eBay. It's a single cable that goes into USB 3 port, and at the other end it's got one lightning, one USB-C, and one micro USB cable coming at the other end, so you can plug into three different devices and charge them all at the same time. Oh, that's handy. That's it's handy. too funny, isn't it, though, to make such a big deal over the colour of the cord. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but that's what they do. So Apple- But that has been, I mean, you're wearing white headphones now. I don't know whether they're Apple ones, but yeah, they are. Um, yeah, old everybody ones. kind of followed suit. There was a lot of white headphones that came out after that. Mm. You know, there's a lot of things that were called i something or oh, i yes. or iPhone or i whatever you wanted. Yeah, it's i everything. They set a trend, didn't they, with the eyes? Oh, yes, exactly. And then everyone's rushing to, uh, you know, to the eighty. We're posting to register i domains and all this sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> i domains. Yeah, they were crazy. going off. Yeah, oh, yeah, everything. Uh, so oh, Johnny Ive is returning. Set the trend. Yeah, returning to, uh, to day-to-day management of the company's design teams after handing off managerial duties two years ago to focus on other projects. So in 2015, Ive was named chief design officer, reporting directly to Tim Cook. He then handed off some administrative duties to Apple Design Executives, a Alan Dye and Richard Howarth, to focus on broader efforts such as Apple's retail stores and new spaceship campus in Cupertino. Now, uh, Dye and Howarth will now report to Ive once again. So, there you go, he's back in charge. Johnny Ive, he's back. Where is he? There he is. He's taking a, is he taking a selfie, you reckon? In that yep. photo there? God is I've said on you. <laughs> I like that song. One of my favourites. All right, uh, Jace, what else have you got for us? Well, Australia is a great place and researchers have discovered a solution to one of life's most annoying first world problems, hmm. the dreaded cracked phone screen. But walking around with a smashed screen or being in constant fear of getting one may soon be a thing of the past. With research from the Australian National University, 
heading the development of shatterproof glass for mobile phones. Oh. Aluminosolate is the glass that is used to make smartphone screens. And while it's a common component in many phones, lead researcher Charles Lelosk said it's not a lot is actually known about it on the microscopic level. But adding in different elements to the structure of the glass, such as sodium and potassium, a new atomic structure was able to be set into the pane. These alterations could be developed to make the glass more resistant to breaking and more flexible. We inferred that we could use this knowledge to search for new properties and make glass harder. This will require further work, of course, and will also require some collaboration with the industry. The now we can build on this, but we're talking time frames of maybe five to ten years. Ham, bone in. I was um, reading that article today. It was actually on my list but, to read. Um, I thought it was a really good story. Yeah. Um, but as because Apple have brought out the glass back phone again for starters, is what makes yeah. every time I see. Every time They're going to put Mick out of work again, aren't they, Glenn? I, I think I've said it to you. Or that my sister's got a music store and they do phone repairs. And I said to her, you know, I've heard that the, the, the iPhone's coming out with Gorilla Glass screens. It's not going to be breakable, this version. You're going to go out of business. And then sure enough, it was released. And about a month later, you start hearing the reports of it's the most breakable <laughs> phone come out you know, since the iPhone. But it's beautiful and the sleek it's lines. Beautiful. So she's like, yes, I'm back in business. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think Apple's ever going to make a phone that's not breakable. They make too much money out of phones that break. They can't like, even stop getting new ones. Breakable. Mm. Remember, that wasn't but the iPhone. If someone can come up with a way to stop them breaking, it'd be pretty good anyway, either way, for for the consumer at least. Make them out of cast iron or something. <laughs> Didn't the, wasn't it their 6S? People put them in their pockets and sitting down and they're just bending. Something like that. Yeah. That uh, was the iPhone 6, was it? Was yeah, seven? 6, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. something mm. like the, the, the Maybe more so the 6 Plus, I think. Yeah. The, the bigger ones. But I hope your sister's not one of these mob uh, in, I think it's in Sydney or somewhere in Australia, that have been selling refurbished phones and tablets as new. Can you as believe new? it? No. As no, new. No, she would do that. No, She'd I'll... be making more money if she did that, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three online electronic resellers have admitted to passing off refurbished products and selling them to Australian customers labelled as new. One admitted to misleading customers by telling them it wasn't bound by the Australian consumer laws because it was incorporated overseas. They thought they could do whatever they wanted. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, oh, and we take the packaging off because we, we use our own packaging for so it's safer for delivery. Mm. I remember like years and years ago, you know, when you had your computers that took cassette tapes. <laughs> That's how long ago. That you used to go down to the local shop in Cool and Gutter. Uh, as oh, it used to take ages to load them, didn't it? Yeah, but no, this is like where you bought them. You go to the local shop at Cooley, and the whole wall was filled with all these games. It was like a <laughs> Pandora's box, but everything, all the all the the instructions, everything was just all photocopied. And and yep. when you opened up the the thing to get the tape out, the nice tape, you know, that the smell of San Francisco was like a an Acme tape. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the photocopied instructions and you go, yeah, wow. <laughs> I wonder it's like what. we buy one and we get 100 copies free. Yeah, that's right. Good on you. So now then we make our money back. <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, getting back to these phones. Uh, in one case, a customer yeah. spent $608 on an iPhone 6 that was labelled new, only to have the device fail within three days. After taking the phone to an Apple store, guess what? Apple said, bum, bum, this has been sold a year ago in the U.S., uh, in another case, a customer bought a Samsung Galaxy S5 for 449 which was advertised as being in a sealed box. Three months later, the purchaser, uh, three months after the purchase, the phone screen began to fail and after taking it to a Samsung repairer, found out that it was a refurbished model that had also suffered water damage. Now, these guys uh, have both agreed to contact and offer to redress affected customers as well as clarify when products are refurbished or not. They should be fined. It doesn't say that they had been, but they bloody well should be well, they can't otherwise i just do it again wouldn't they but yeah. yeah so i don't know i think if you look up online there is different ways to tell if your phone is refurbished or not uh, android and apple have got different procedures uh so i think apple is a bit harder actually to tell if it's been refurbished or not but um yeah you got to try and do well, something you could check that it comes in a sealed box that'd be a good start wouldn't it well i guess so but you can reseal boxes can't you these days I worked at a electronics shop one time, and they had um, a plastic 
wrapper machine out the back that did the heat seal plastic wrap so that if somebody brought something back pretty soon after they purchased it got a refund they just reseal it and then resell it again <laughs> well you know you gotta you gotta do your best uh jordan have you got any more stories open on those little tabs of yours um as long as the music doesn't start playing again <laughs> um we don't hear it anyway no it just confuses me i suppose i know um um, Apple quietly increased the cost of some of its products while you were distracted by the iPhone X. Oh, That's a given, I suppose. Yes, I was distracted. Yes, I don't know which ones. That's one headline I had. Um, so the iPhone X, I saw that what it's coming out. What is it like? iPhone X version two next year or something? It's called X- already. Is it? Yes, yeah, so the the uh, 2018 release of the iPhone X. I mean, huh? That'd be the XI, wouldn't it? Or the the. <laughs> no, the V, the V, oh, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> probably. The IX. Um, yeah, so, Jordan, was there any more that you had there? Were you still going? Sorry. Yeah, well, that was, yeah, that was, I was, won't get into that story. There was another one about how Australians are beating tech restrictions by importing the best gadgets not available down under. Oh. Um, uh, and now I've got this another video thing that's popped up in front of me. <laughs> you love uh, it. Plans across the Pacific Ocean every single day of the world has never seemed smaller and easier to access despite some of the best technical technological creations still don't reach um, as far as Australia and many don't arrive in stores for months after their worldwide release release this thing keeps popping up in front of me but I think you know if you got if anyone listens to like overseas podcasts or whatever you know you sort of get to know what's out and about and it, it's not hard to buy it and get it sent over I have to, um, to read nine.com.au news anymore they've got too many things going on yep. yeah you just click uh, are you on chrome to use google chrome um no i probably could just click the i'm using windows but i uh, edge i probably oh. could have just clicked the read mode couldn't i i'm not sure if read mode does that probably does yeah, yeah. it just silences it oh uh, yeah there it goes it's, it did worked hmm. yeah so um yeah so it's not to, you know you get you have to keep up to speed with certain things uh, and just get them ordered and sent over here if you like. Uh, mm. I, so, yeah. Uh, Anybody can, really. That's what my, I think that's when I read the article. I thought to myself, well, most people can get on eBay, eBay or something. If you're smart enough, you can get anything you want, really. Yeah. It's well, you just a matter of looking. Get a pair but of these pieces. people. these people thought, why isn't there anybody doing it? So they're actually um, they're getting it together and sending stuff to Australia. Hmm. Yeah, um, but get a pair of prism glasses, you know, high technology. Yeah. <laughs> so, so get, go and get some. Now, talking about health and eye health, Kogan, he's going crazy, this guy, isn't he? He unveils, he's unveiled a Medibank-backed health insurance. So what does he do? He sells electronics, he sells sporting goods, he sells gardening, he sells IT stuff, computers, iPhones, and now he's into health. He's into everything. Medibank will underwrite the insurance policies for Kogan Health with branding, marketing, and customer acquisition to be handled by Kogan, and they're going to earn commission on the sales. So Medibank Chief Customer Officer David something said something <laughs> said Kogan.com has been very good at creating a sharp, low-fuss online experience for value-conscious customers. So this partnership is a great match and we'll be able to do something different and active for Kogan Health customers. Now, the health insurance brand... Oh God, have I got a picture of something here? Maybe not. I thought I did. No. The health insurance brand is expected to launch in the first half of next year, which is good. Uh, Kogan generated, just for interest's sake, Kogan generated revenues of $289.5 million for the 12 months prior to June uh, 2017, growing 37.1% on the financial year previous, 2016, of then was a net profit of 7.2. That's an 800% increase on last year's 800,000. That's good money, isn't it? He's uh, he's raking it in. But I don't know, but these things, you know, these cutthroat, cheapy things, uh, does that like do you guys? I, I find it hard to say go and get like home insurance from Coles. Like, I don't really care who underwrites it. Like, I can't even be bothered finding out who underwrites it, you know, to see if it's fair income. But, like, I got my home and content through Coles. And what you they like it? Yeah, they had the best deal for home contents insurance, so I went with them. 
Yeah, but was it was it? But I'm just saying, like, I'm probably dodgy on it because it's maybe not just the financial side of the the premium, but just is it hard to claim? The, you know, whatever. Are they dodgy? I'm or hoping what? I'll never have to find out. I hope you never have to find out. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, right. Most people turn their noses up to brokers, but I still believe, you know, sometimes that's the best angle. Yes. They, get, they have, you know, yeah. they, they, they know how to get, get the best deal. Yeah. I'm not trying to promote the brokers, but. <laughs> yeah, you're, probably, you're not wrong. I think my brother owns a surf shop and he he goes through a broker for the shop insurance. And I think I think that if you go through, through a broker in that instance, yeah, you, you get someone that knows what they're talking about and can and say to you, well, you need insurance for, you know. And money. they can niggle with the insurance the insurance companies as well, you know, and, and beat them down and get a, get mm. the insurance accurate rather than just. But yes, accurate. Yes, exactly. Rather and than that just, saves you money being accurate. Yeah, because you can get onto these sites like CGU and all whatever it is and all this sort of yeah. stuff and do an online yeah bloody you know uh register online sign up for this insurance online and who knows if you've got the right coverage you know like who knows if you yeah and whether you like you say you're going to be able to claim and get you know as that company that you're getting insurance from got a good reputation mm. they're going to come through yeah, you know their, their end so. yeah because even i know when i first started because i go through yui for a couple of things and even when i first thought of get went to Yui, I thought, oh, who are these guys? You know, and then, so I started Googling them and I went, no, I think they're underwritten by someone in South Africa. And I even went to well, where did, where are they in Australia? And I even, you know, street Googled them and thought, oh yeah, that's their little call center. Okay, it looks Fred Inkham then. But you just you gotta yeah. be, you gotta be careful. Uh what else? It's uh, the same as websites, isn't it? When you go to a website and you go, it looks nice, it must be fine. It's a good mm. safe website. Looks great. Looks looks professional. And you get some website that doesn't look professional and you think oh yeah, that's but, you right. know, the, the good ones can the good ones that look good can be just as bad you know? yeah but then i know people that say with websites they they say to me well i don't want it look uh to look too good because i don't want to th- want people to think that i'm so rich i've got this fantastic website <laughs> and i don't need the business i want it to so it's all in comic sense yeah, mm. That's right, and uh, they're just flashing lights, <laughs> all the all the the good old and an animated stuff. gift with the Mail Us logo that has the oh yes box there, and the letter goes. <laughs> that's a fun. Remember those? <laughs> like yeah. Vo City, everyone had those. Yes. and the counter. They should put a counter that on counter. the website. Those were yes. so nineteen nineties. I miss counters. Well, what was it? Hitcounter dot com. That's right. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think they're still. I think a- I've still got one. I don't know if it works, but is there a can? <laughs> I get an email every now and then from Stat Counter saying you've 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 reached this much or you've reached that much. Is but there it's a-, a hidden one? I use AW Stats for everything. Yeah, mm. I'll just have a look oh, on. I've got AW Stats is built in pretty much yep. to. I thought the that- Sir Don't get a site if it hasn't got C panel. Why would you? I don't know. But I was looking. Oh, look at MSY. I was looking up MSY. I just had an old website a long time ago that I, I had used used Stat Counter. It's just and it's still there. But it's, yep. I don't know. I never take notice of it. I thought the MS, code is so old. I thought MSY might have still had a counter, but I yep. can't see anything on their site except that the thing that the federal <laughs> that the A Triple C made them put up. The <laughs> poor yep. poor bastards. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. What else is there? What else is happening? Uh, Jordan, do you have anything else? No, I, I kind of browsed through that. That was pretty That's quick. I'm it. happy to just. just just chime in. Keep going with whatever you've got. You got any more questions? That was good having someone. Email and a question. We've got to get more people doing that, I reckon. Yeah. So get a so question. Get a question if people feel up to it, email it in or. So we're not fin- financial advisors. Disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. We're not any advisors. But if you've got a question about Bitcoin, you know. You, I'm if you sure sell the house and invest in Ethereum and it drops next week, it's not my fault. You did it, me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, or oh, how's this one? Here's, a, here's one to uh, make you laugh. A. F- Firefighter slam YouTube prankster who cemented a microwave oven to his head. <laughs> so <laughs> now, <laughs> now I'll get this on the YouTube for those on the video. You will be able to see this clown. And so hang on, here we go. There he is. He's got a microwave on his head. So what happened was uh, he he put his head in a plastic bag. Before seven bags of polyfill were poured into the oven by his friends, he quickly became trapped because the polyfiller set. What did he think would happen? (laughs) 
<laughs> His friend spent nearly 90 minutes trying to free him before calling an ambulance crew. When the paramedics were unable to help, the fire service was called. So, <laughs> so apparently they had to put in uh, like little straws or some sort of little airway for him to start breathing. I'm just trying to get, I'll just try and fast forward this video. So there's all the polyfiller, some sort of tube. Hang on, they, 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 they go around mixing it up. Well, that must have been, they must have put the tube in to, for him to breathe before they did that. Okay, so they're mixing up the polyfiller, mixing it up. You can tell they're pretty educated guys. Just the way they carry it on, even without sound. <laughs> gosh, gosh, why would you do it? I mean, really? I don't know. It obviously, so what's, what's the net fame? He's known worldwide now, isn't he? He is. The YouTube video has got about what uh, three million eight hundred odd views. And how much money has he made from YouTube advertising dollars? Who knows? Yeah, who would know? That's why you do it. He's had thirty-two thousand dislikes. <laughs> this thing thumbs down. They don't have shitty. They still get paid for dislikes as much as they do likes. <laughs> I guess so. They don't have shitty cameras recording that. That's not just. It's no, it's a not... quality recording and editing there. So it's not like it's just a couple of pranksters who did this. They they were well prepared. So yeah, they've done it as a yeah. Yeah, so there so he is. So next, next year he's going to be on YouTube Rewind wearing a microwave on his head and dancing. But your 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 theory of well produced might have just come unstuck. They can't spell. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, the air tube got blocked. Oh, no. <laughs> they can't spell the. So, yeah, so there ESL, you go. Glenn, ESL. You what? ESL. What's ESL? English is second language. Oh, yes, right. So there you go. So if you're looking for something to do on the weekend uh, with some, and you got some, head. yeah, and you got some cement and some polyfiller and a microwave handy, uh, don't do that because yeah, no. you'll unless you yeah you'll call a call a fire engine. Have they stopped laughing yet? Yeah, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. They're but like, anyway. what do we do this they, for? They're yeah. not going to stop laughing because it's funny the initially. Yeah, well, it wasn't funny after he got stuck in there. I know that because he, when I was watching the video, they go, he's going like, "Oh, this is so heavy! It's so heavy!" And yeah, it would be <laughs> like a, a, yeah. a thing full of cement on your head. Yeah, funny <laughs> stuff. All right, Jay's, what else? Take us off that topic. Well, let's take us back down again. Yeah. By aggregating the data from over two hundred and fifty separate breaches, cyber criminals have created an easily accessible and usable treasure trove with fourteen one point four billion clear text login credentials, according to security researchers for IQ. If you're in the habit of reusing your credentials, then this aggregated interactive database, which lets criminals query and receive responses in under a second, should have you worried. This isn't the first time criminals have pulled together data from multiple breaches, but it's their largest collection known and the step forward insofar as the database is organized hierarchically and is fully searchable. If a threat actor wants to target a specific person, they can search for an email address and then grab a password or a set of passwords that has been used before and try and exploit other accounts. Amongst the nuggets, search for admin, administrator, and root return 226,600 passwords used by administrators in seconds. The data dump is a massive 41 gigabytes, and 4IQ says 14% of passwords in the dump were previously undecrypted, with another 318 million previously unpublished user accounts in the data dump. The challenge is for most of us isn't following good password hygiene today, but not reusing passwords, employing a good password management tool and using two-factor authentication where we can. Mm. The real problem is old accounts we've forgotten about and the sheer volume of sites we've created a username and password for. Chances are we've all reused passwords and going back to fix all those is quite difficult. Yes. Well, I think, like, I think everyone has a normal password for just junky sites. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. And a good good place to check if if somebody has got your password, go to haveibeenpwned.com. Yes, I know. And you can put in your yeah, email address or username there and they'll search. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I have been pwned. Have yeah. I been pwned? It's a good one. You put your email address in and... You can even put in partial email address if you're scared of them or just your username if it's something unusual like Warlock. It'll tell you what it's been in. Good start. I think, yeah, I've had a few. Yep. Pawned on eight like, breach sites. 
Adobe got breached. So, yep, first one, Adobe, yep. <laughs> Bitly. Bitly, Daily Motion, Dropbox, yep. And yeah, like, something else, Plex, XSplit. Everyone's been hacked. Yeah, so there you go. Have I been pwned? All right. Yeah, it's a good one. Hmm. That and went it's round. encrypted. You can see up the top. I think so there was a... Right. Who <laughs> yes. was it that got hacked? Not long... Uh, there's been a few of them, hasn't there? It was one of the big ones. Sony? There was a guy, Matt, on Twitter who had the Twitter account, MAT, and they just wanted to have such a small, uh, short and cool Twitter account. So they did everything they could to hack his account and got into it. But there was one, there was a, a big site that got hacked not long back and it kind of Yahoo? went out on, an, on, it was Yahoo or something like that. Mm. It went out on an announcement that people yeah, should go to that, in that toned that website or whatever it is and they sort of let everyone know they should go and check. I think it was like a, it was like a Yahoo or a Hotmail or a, Apple or something, and they were saying to people, "There was a, it was a, oh no, it was when the viruses were out. We had the big virus come through, and everyone was like checking out that they hadn't been hacked and gotten this virus. What was a really big one that came through? Yeah, there was the YouTube that one six months ago. Yeah, hmm? there, well, there was the U, not the YouTube one, the uh, Yahoo one. <laughs> yeah, and... big, no, there was a big virus that went round. Oh, uh, that's that wanna cry. Yeah, the want to cry. It was around that mm. time and everyone was like, you better go check your email is not being hacked and make sure you yeah. get your password's right. You don't want to get it. And they were telling everyone to go to the, that pwned, pwned, oh, okay. or pwned yeah. website to get check your email so that you don't, you know, you don't get hacked and get this want to cry bug and so what, spread it. Yeah, so what you do is if you come up on that site, uh, if have I been pwned, uh, you just change your password and your login credentials for those sites and you should be right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Jace, what's happening with uh, prawns and plastic bags? Yeah, Angelina Aurora was sitting in a local fish and chip shop looking at all the discarded fish waste, piles of crab shells, prawn tails and fish heads, kilos and kilos of it all destined for the bin. There had to be a better way, the 15-year-old budding young scientist thought. She got a few kilos of discarded shells, took them to a Sydney girls' high school science lab and started experimenting. Eventually, she managed to find a way to turn them into a strong, light and biodegradable plastic. The Year 10 schoolgirl hopes one day to see it used in plastic bags at supermarkets around Australia. Mm. The dream is to basically have every single plastic in the world made out of my plastic, she said. In 2016, Angelina won first prize in chemistry for her age bracket at the New South Wales Young Scientist Award for another wow. plastic made from cornstarch. Cornstarch plastic broke down as soon as it was exposed to water, which made it very biodegradable, but also completely impractical. However, the win did lead to an introduction to several scientists at CSIRO who have mentored, uh, remained her mentors on the current project. Corn shells contain a special hard but flexible protein called chitin. When the scientists' guidance and a litre of hydrochloric acid, Angelina managed to extract the chitin from the shells. She then combined it with an extremely sticky protein she extracted from the silk of silkworms. It's the same protein that spiders use to make webs. It's very sticky. When you mix it with chitin, it produces a fabric that is flexible and strong and exhibits all the properties you want in plastic. How good's that? Good, good honour. That's Not too great. Bad. Yeah. Good to see that some, some Aussie girls are out there trying to solve the plastic bag issue. Yeah, and if they end up in the ocean, they just biodegrade and fall to bits and it's just all natural. That's fantastic, isn't mm, it? Mm. So, you know, when they say, uh, like, cigarette butts take 500 years to degrade, like, is that fair income? So, you could, yeah. so they, they, that you bury one, it's going to be there for 500 years. Yeah, That's what a lot saying. of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Plastic bags are going to be there forever. They're, a lot of them are just, um, even if they do crumble in the ocean, there's just micro fibers of uh, plastic all through the ocean now even if you can't see a whole plastic bag and oh, yeah. fish are drink fish are uh, in drinking oh, it like this yeah. so. and i think this is the last one i think is it jace for you uh the well maybe it'll maybe it'll bring a glimmer of hope for you glenn we're hoping well before you do the last one i need to i need to just quickly correct something here that i said earlier mm. um, <gasps> that i i jumped the gun a little bit this apple black cord is not all of the story. I was just sitting here reading it. It's, it's not a black just, computer as well. It's, yeah, it's, here's me jumping the gun because I was so rushed to get a story <laughs> in the last 10 minutes before we started. Um, but yeah, it says the, the uh, iMac Pro will come in space gray. 
Oh, nice. Sweet. So, so, there you go. so I didn't even know. I was just guessing it's there as a joke. And it's mouse. <laughs> I'm sitting here reading the first half of the article. I think yeah. it's a story about us just having a black cable. But no, <laughs> the black one is going to be space gray. So is it and a black cable or a space gray cable? It is black. I Same think it, no, they said it was a black. They said it was a black cable, but it's a space grey mm. um, iMac Pro, which would be space actually quite nice. So they're getting away from the, the all of the white, not just the cord. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess you know. Go and go and watch that Apple too. <laughs> that so Apple now, too. Now we won't get. Now we won't get reprimanded for not telling the story. It accurately. was all the beige, and now it's all the black. <laughs> I know. I'd, I'd hate black is the new black. I'd hate Johnny I have to ring me up again. Two weeks in a row. Not again. Telling yeah, me, you, so, know, you know, you're telling your stories wrong, man. Yeah. Get it right. I said, Johnny, <laughs> just leave a message on the website. I'm over it. <laughs> Maybe like when, when I, I was, had a, I, was, I think I was laughing at that article before I finished reading it. So <laughs> that must be why I kind of. When I had a um, app in the Apple store and they rang me up about it and it's like, hi, this is Steve from Apple. And I was like, <gasps> And it was a different. There's another guy called Steve oh, who's on the app review. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh no! That's a, that was a letdown. I bet. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's AT and T yes. has started trials in Georgia State and a non-US location to deliver high-speed internet over power lines. The number two wireless carrier said on Wednesday, making its latest push to offer faster broadband service to more customers. AT&T claims to eventually deliver speeds faster than one gigabit per second consumers can currently get through fiber internet service using high frequency airwaves that can travel along power lines. While the Georgia Trail is in a rural area, the service could potentially be deployed in suburbs and cities, the company said. We think this product is eventually one that could actually serve anywhere near a power line, ah. said Michael Miracle Knight, AT&T's Senior Vice President of Wireless Network Architecture and Design. Bum, bum, she bum, added bum, bum. that AT&T chose an international trial location in part because the market opportunity extends beyond the United States. AT&T said it had no timeline for commercial deployment, that it would look to expand trials as it develops the technology. Potentially, it can be a really big deal. You need the power company to play ball with you. That's the downside. AT&T and Verizon, the largest US wireless carrier, have also been testing 5G internet services in which the last leg of connection is delivered via a radio signal to homes using high-frequency airwaves known as millimeter wave spectrum. Verizon said in November it would launch the faster broadband service in three to five US markets in 2018. Now, I just happen to have a picture of uh, Michael Knight here. There he is. From AT&T. I don't know. Knight. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same one, but uh, that'll do. <laughs> that'll do. Good on it. we flight into the dangerous world of a man who, who does not, not exist. exist. <laughs> How good was that show? <laughs> that has been on uh, Seven Mate just recently. I think it was. It was good. Hoppers in everything. Have you seen? Did you see Kung Fury? Fury the movie? No. <laughs> Go watch Kung Fury. It's a it's a piss take on all the old. Um, cop shows but also with uh, 1980s computers and stuff like this like the guy goes back in time by standing on a commodore 64 keyboard <laughs> that hovers and flies through a time wormhole back in time and the guy who's sending him there is wearing like a nintendo power glove to operate his computer and everything and they have a his partner is a um tyrannosaurus rex and, um, yeah, it's a really, really funny movie that was uh, funded on Kickstarter called Kung Fury. It's free to watch on YouTube now. And they're working on Kung Fury too, so it should be awesome. But it's got the Hoff makes a um, cameo in there. It's really good. I didn't mind the, the second, uh, the comeback of Knight Rider. I thought that was all right. Not with the Hoff yep. in it, but that was good. only lasted one season. But, uh, anyway. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I thought it was good. Yeah, but sometimes I wonder if, if I don't know, maybe, maybe the gen, the, the next generation of people just don't appreciate the some of the old shows the way we did. Yeah. Well, I guess so. Yeah, I guess that maybe you know you're coming into it fresh and you think, no, oh, what's this a talking car? Eh, that's we've got that. Simon and yeah, Simon. We've got, Remington we've got Siri Steel. now. You know what's? Yeah. You know, oh, geez, Remington like Steel. That was good. Before. Simon Simon this, Simon? Isn't, this isn't new technology. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Simon, it's Simon. Not, it's not like back back then. We were talking cars was not non-existent. We would have thought that was amazing, but now mm. yep. it's possible. I liked. Um, I think it was Matt Houston. They had uh, in the lounge room of his um, mansion or whatever. They had a table, 
and uh, they press a button and this computer with CRT screen and everything would just spin up out of the desk <laughs> and then lock into place. And I was like, that would be so awesome to have in my bedroom as my computer. Just press mm. a button, it comes up, press a button, it goes back down. It's just a normal table again. I was watching the, uh, the Christmas holiday vacation, the National Lampoons. And yeah. like just you won. <laughs> just at the start, you know, when uh, Clark is planning his trip over across the country, he's using an old, oh, some little computer, a Commodore or something, and you know, yep. just on the screen, the graphics and all this. So it's just, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, the original, that's good. Yeah, they've they've been playing the um, remake lately on free to air TV, and I don't think it'd be as good. I mean, Chevy oh, no. makes a cameo in it, but. He really made those movies. Oh yeah, that's right. That's why they were they were funny because of him. Yep. <laughs> that's right. It's well, like that when you, it's like that as well with things like you know your superhero movies, especially like Superman. I hear so many people say that nothing beats the original. The originals, yeah. yeah. Well, I think like with the Supermans, like it's gone off onto a different way. You know, like it's darker or something, or it's more it's just like, so much more action and not enough heroism. Yeah, well, too much Michael Bay. You know, where's all the where's all the saves? You know? Yeah, you know more you, explosions. Yeah, yeah, you can't you save. Blow things up and have punch-ons rather than actually go and save a few stranded people hanging from buildings or, or, something. or spin you around the save. earth backwards to save your girlfriend. Spin the earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what, where's all those plot lines gone? But, uh, right. Yeah, they had imagination back the same. then. Damn it! And when she found out that Clark was Superman, oh my goodness, <gasps> how good was that? Yeah. He took the glasses off. What? Yeah. Put a hand. In, put his hand in the fire. Yeah. He's like, "Watch this. You want to see something? Watch this." Oh, oh. no way! No way! Really? <laughs> Hang on. Where'd he go? He's yeah. gone. Yeah. He's... Oh, how are you doing that? How does that work? I don't know. It's uh, all CGI. See, this is not a real watch back here. Oh, isn't it? Oh, no. I'm all deflated now. I thought you it's were all doing high tech, man. I thought that was this a real high tech show. I thought that was a huge we need some, watch. We need some. CGI to deflate you and have you sort of whisk fly off, off there, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Ooh, like hide a, like my, a, hide like my a balloon just flying away. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, bye bye. All right, well, talking about bye byes, it is time for us to go. Uh, don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio at AussieTechRadio.com. Tune it in on your Tune In Radio app and you just search for Aussie Tech Radio. You can get us on the Twitter at Aussie Tech Heads, at Glenn Goodman or at Warlock. I don't know, Jordan, have you got a Twitter? No. No. no I've so, never even used to it, believe it or not. Uh, so you can't get Jordan to be at, don't worry. And don't forget <laughs> the whatever else there is, Obsidian Loft and Old Fart Geek. So there might be, we're trying to get an Old Fart Geek happening pretty soon over the holidays maybe. And that's about it. So cool. Good stuff. Uh, Christmas soon. Hope you've all done your Christmas shopping. I haven't. Haven't started. It's going to be, yeah, you I've know. Yeah, I've got Fitbit <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's going to be, I'm going to. Christmas present to me. Oh, I, did, I got my own Christmas. I got my Sonos speaker. How good's oh, that? So yeah. you can, hey, Sonos, turn the TV on. No, Sonos doesn't do that. Oh, uh, they're going to be do a smart speaker, though. It's a nice speaker. I love the sound on it. This is so good. Spotify? Yes. Yeah, push Spotify through it. I push, oh, I can push podcasts through it. Uh, whatever, but Spotify, yes, yeah, so, so clear, it's so good. I went to a Paul McCartney. You need to be like Leo and have a Sonos in every room in the house and it follows you through the house on the different speakers. Well, I don't know how it follows you. There must be a special app it for that. where your phone is. Does it? Well, admittedly, I've only got one, so one speaker. <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway. But if you want it to follow you, you have to put it in your back pocket or, or carry it yourself. <laughs> at, least it know, at, least, at least it knows where your phone is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. At least something knows. Oh, I've got hey, some... Sonos, where's my phone in your back pocket, idiot? That's <laughs> <laughs> bent like a banana. You got a 6S. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, join us at the YouTube or on the iTunes or whatever your favourite podcatcher is. And uh, have a good week, everyone. Thanks, uh, Jace and Jordan. Thanks for coming in. Bye. And uh, giving us your take on the stories this week. And, yeah, good stuff. We'll see you all next week for the, what, the Thursday before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you then, everyone. Bye for now. Ta-da. Yeah.